All right, this is part three in the single-ended KT88 amplifier build series. Sorry I've been away so long. Um, by the time these transformers showed up, which took a much, much longer time than I had anticipated, by then summer had gotten here and we just had a lot going on with um, various things family-wise. So I promised I'd get back to this here at Labor Day and here we are. So we're gonna dive in and uh, let's open these boxes and see what we've got inside. Okay, got them cut open here and you can see them. Um, kind of give you a little sales order ship and a little warning here about um, bending wires and being careful with them and uh, coming out of the end bells. Um, some pretty cool new stickers. Looks like they've got a new logo. Very proud of their uh, kind of made in the USA heritage here. So uh, pretty neat stuff. Okay, so we've kind of got all four boxes here. Um, we've got the choke here. Uh, the power transformer, we've got the two output transformers at this point. Um, pretty good stuff here and this is, uh, they came packed inside the other boxes. Um, as you can see this is a 10 Henry at 200 milliamp choke here. And we've got our power transformer here. Um, it's the XPWR033. It's 120 volt transformer. Um, you can see here the CXSE25-85K, what that kind of stands for is um, single-ended 25 watt um, 8 ohm 5K tap here on the outputs. So uh, pretty solid transformers as you can see and it also has a 40% um, screen tap if we decided to use that. All right, here they are outside the boxes. You can see them, um, beautiful little blue um, cases. Um, you can see the wires coming out the bottom. Uh, that's only got two wires, it's a choke. And I love the way they kind of label things on the bottom as well to kind of tell you about them. The only thing I'm not crazy about on these uh, is their stickers with the Edcore name. While I'm proud of the uh, kind of the Edcore name, I'm not so proud of uh, showing it off on the front of my transformer. So we'll, we'll solve that here in a minute. I also give you these little sheets here, basically shipping labels with the, uh, the details about them. I think that's pretty neat. And these things here are extremely heavy. I've got really big hands and you can kind of see um, relative to it how large these transformers are. All right, you can see here I am starting to remove the stickers from these. It's just as simple as peeling it up on one end, kind of lifting it the rest of the way across. Uh, kind of take it slow. You'll have a little bit of residue left where you started it at and typically where it ends there at the end. If you haven't learned this trick, you can use the piece of tape or the sticker itself here, the other sticky part on it, to keep dabbing and you'll get rid of the rest of that rev rev residue. Um, works out pretty well and um, when you get done, you will have a nice transformer cover here, uh, nice and cleaned up, looking good. All right, up next I use just a little bit of uh, polishing wa uh, or wax that has some uh, cleaning polishing compound in built into it. And you can see here I've already rubbed it on these transformers really good. I'm just taking it off with a regular uh, uh, towel I could use when you wax a car. And these things turn out beautiful with a nice uh, nice sheen on them. Um, gonna just keep cleaning them, get them all done. All right, that's another amp we've got here in the house. It's a single ended, uh, 300B amplifier and you might notice uh, it uses the same output transformers um, that we're using in this amplifier. I think those are uh, 3.5Ks though instead of 5K on the uh, primary. Here's a 6S and 7, some 5687 tubes for the phase inverters um, and then the 300B output, some mesh plate 300Bs. This one uses kind of a 5U4 uh, power supply and it's a uh, it's got a, uh, I think it's a Thordeson or maybe Stancor um, transformer and choke in it here. But um, nonetheless, very, very heavy amplifier, much like this one's going to be. All right, doing a little bit of play pretend here where we actually set these transformers up on the chassis gently and kind of just maneuver them around till we get, think we've got them in the right places. I think this might be, but you can see we'll put the KT88s, the uh, driver tube up front here. Uh, the choke over here on one side, the power transformer over here as well. And just generally we're uh, playing with how these things are laid out. 
All right, then I've just kind of laid out where I think the tubes are going to go. We're going to have the KT88 over here on the left-hand side um, centered in front of each transformer. I'll have another KT88 here. Um, kind of center those up. We've got the, um, you know, making sure we get the right spacing between each of those. You don't want to get too close. Um, got the little driver tube we'll put up front here. Um, we got the um, power supply rectifier and the choke over here. I do like the fact that all the power supply will kind of be on the right hand side of this amplifier. Um, and we kind of align these things up in parallel with each other here. Okay, and just a couple of the tools I use here to mark up the chassis with. Just a regular uh, straight ruler here. Uh, metal one, a plastic long ruler. Um, just kind of measure things off with. Set of calipers here I use from time to time. And then just a uh, kind of a chassis punch. You hold this thing up, uh, kind of push it down wherever you want, and it clicks, boom, and it makes, leaves a little indention in your chassis. Um, that is what I'll ultimately use as the mark. All right, up next, kind of laid everything out. I laid the tube sockets out. I use a graphite pencil here, as you can see, um, just to, to kind of mark in the middle of the holes. And then I kind of make sure left and right, um, parallel with the chassis, that everything's lined up. Uh, once you get one done, then you can kind of use a ruler to kind of measure how far from the, uh, from the front of the chassis it is to kind of mark off the others here, and keep everything in parallel. As you can start to see here, you can see the little graphite markings uh, starting to pop up everywhere as I kind of lay the components out and mark them off. Okay, we've made a uh, strategic decision on placement of the choke here. And we've decided to turn the choke at a 90 degree angle to the actual power transformer. It's to stop any interaction between the two that could have happened, the eddy currents flowing between them here. Um, and where this transformer placed, I don't think the eddy currents uh, turned this way are going to interfere back in because it's not in the same plane as the uh, output transformers here. And there's a good distance between them. Okay, so we, now we've got uh, those turned and oriented that way. I'm going to make sure I've got enough room here to put the uh, 5U4, I mean uh, 5AR4 right here. And we're going to keep it kind of in parallel with the other um, transformers right our output tubes right along here okay as you can see here we've got quite a few holes popping up now at this point and um, we're going to come along now that we've got that done make sure they're all parallel with each other and kind of equal distance from the front here um, and then we can use our actual little chassis punch here to um, go down inside of the uh, just the right point for it and you just kind of push down really hard and mark the chassis at that point. And we're just going to go around the entire chassis um, one after another, kind of pushing these things down. And it just leaves a little divot. Um, you can barely see it, but it puts a little indentation into the metal. And um, that makes it uh, easy once you go to drill these things to use that little indentation. Okay, you can see the little bitty dimple it leaves inside the graphite marking here. All right, as you can see here, quite a few holes. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, and 24 back here. That's, uh, that's a lot of holes. And don't forget, we also have to drill the holes in between these um, for, the, for the tube centers here. So you got to have a hole right in the middle of that for the uh, three-quarter inch hole as well as we've got to have holes all the way around now um, for the wires to run down through on the transformers. All right, one thing to note, if you run a parallel line between the mounting holes here on the transformer, the place where the actual um, wires come out of the transformer is not in line with that. It's actually about a half an inch or somewhere around there inward, as you can see here. So we've got to take that into account when marking the place for the uh, holes for the the wires to come through. All right, as you can see here, I've used a white crayon or a china marker like this to kind of mark every spot on this chassis. Kind of colored in the divot makes it easy to see when you go to drill. Uh, and this stuff will wipe off eventually. Um, if you notice here, there are 35 holes in this entire chassis at this point in time. It's a lot of work. All right, as you can see here, we're just going to use a standard household drill. I'm not getting out the drill press or anything. 
trying to keep this simple, something that everyone at home could do. Um, trying to use normal tools like anybody at home would use. Cut two two by fours shorter than the in internal length of this chassis. And the purpose for that being so we can lay these down and then put the chassis on top of it and um, actually drill then down into the wood and, and um, keeps the chassis from flexing and keeps your holes round as you drill this, these things out. And like I said, this may or may not be your forte. If it's not, find a friend to help you out. It's really not my forte. I'm much more um, of a electrical guy. And you can see here I'm just using some standard Dewalt bits too. Nothing, nothing fancy. All right, and then if you'll notice, I've got two different size screws this here. I'm going to use a 440 by 3 um, 8. So I'm going to use this for um, actually mounting the tube sockets here. They fit in there just beautifully. And then I use these 10, 24 by half inch uh, that I'm going to use to mount down uh, the transformer mounts everywhere I go. You need something fairly heavy duty for those. And um, then you just find the right size drill bit to kind of match up with these. And as you can see here for this little one, I'm finding a uh, 964 inch bit and I hold the kind of screw up to the bottom of it and see that that's just about right. And then I've got a, um, I think it's a 1364 bit that this matches up perfectly with. So that'll get us where we, what we need. As you can see here, continuing to just drill along, you can see when you get through to the wood, a good bit of wood will show up on the other side. Okay, I'm going to apologize for a minute. Just about all the video up to this point, I had not learned how to work the mic properly on this new camera, and thus I had to go back and voice over and kind of do a uh, voice dub. At this point, I'm actually recording live um, live audio as I drill out, but you can see I'm getting them. I'm getting them here. I've got these three, these three, these three, these three, and we'll just keep kind of keep working through it. Um, look, these things are, do not have to be perfect. The reason being, uh, by the time you drill out the big center hole here in the middle of this and kind of push your, um, or not that, but the, uh, the center hole here and you push your thing up through the bottom of the chassis and you put two screws down on the other side of it, it's going to look great because the, uh, these pan head screws and the size of the uh, heads on them kind of make up for any, uh, and maybe you're off just the slightest little bit or whatever, it'll cover up any perfections, imperfections. Okay, you can see here we're starting to drill the larger holes now at this point for the transformer mounts. And as you can see here, I've uh, stepped up to the 13th 64 inch bit. And like I said, we're just moving it around to the woods over top of it like that. You can see, you can see how the wood kind of showed up here in the back. Just make sure you got the wood under it when you're drilling it. Um, helps to uh, keep this from flexing any and, uh, and kind of causing uh, triangle shaped holes versus nice round holes. I had some guys give me some tips on my last video and that has helped me out significantly. And as you can see here when you get them all drilled, um, holes everywhere, also holes everywhere in the wood. And I think it's uh, it's turning out nicely. Like I said, it, uh, you see a little bit of crayon work I got to clean off of these uh, places, but all in all in general I'm happy with how it's turning out. Okay, up next I've got uh, my seven little grommets laid out that I'm going to use. You can buy these in little uh, packs at Lowe's Hardware, Home Depot, or whatever. Or I bought a big pack of them off of uh, offline. And then you can use a little stepper bit, um, something like one of these, to actually uh, make the hole large enough to feed these in. And don't forget on this one, the choke, there's only one hole here, by the way. Only got one set of wires, but we're gonna we're gonna drill one of these out and figure out which which notch on the bit. I bet it's up to about the third one on this one, or maybe the fourth one on this one uh, would be the right size, and then we'll feed the rubber grommet in there and get it to snap in. You can always start small because you can always get bigger if for whatever reason this doesn't work. But if you go too big, it's kind of hard to go smaller. As you can see here, you just kind of run this bit down in get it to where you want it and then you've got a nice clean round hole and then what we try to do is work this grommet down in there so what you want is the little hole in the middle of the grommet uh, you want this hole just slightly larger but not a whole lot and uh, then you have to use a screwdriver to kind of work that grommet down in there so at that point it's just a matter of taking the rubber grommet here and you kind of got to just uh, work with it a little bit um, kind of get it going on one side kind of push the other side around and then you'll get it to where there's just a teeny little lip left here 
and typically you can use a flat object. Don't use something sharp, you'll poke a hole through the side of it, but um, you can kind of work it down like that. And eventually here, we'll actually get it down in there. And then you can wiggle this thing around a little bit. And we've got our nice little long rubber grommet in place. All right, we've got our seven grommets in here. Uh, two, 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 and one right here. And I think this is uh, starting to look pretty good. Up next, we've got to tap out. Um, remember, we've got to drill these center holes here. And we're going to use a chassis punch for that. But this, the bolt on the chassis punch that goes through the middle is larger than this hole. So we're going to use the same little stepper bit to kind of get this uh, center of the hole out a little bit and be able to drop, uh, drop the bolt through the middle to do the cutting. All right. What we've got here, if you can, if I can zoom in on it, you can see it's a Greenlee one and three sixteenths inch diameter uh, chassis punch. And if you'll notice, the inner part or the uh, part of the Molex connector here or belton connector here uh, fits just just about right in the middle of that. So we've got to be able to cut down through the middle here and um, you know put this from the bottom side. And we got to be able to push this bolt down through there to tighten it so that it'll pull this cutter up through. Ultimately the cutter kind of pulls up in and it cuts you a nice little circle. Um, but we got to get the hole big enough for this bolt and to do that we're going to use a stepper bit to kind of get it uh, large enough there to, uh, to drill out that bolt hole. Yeah, I thought I'd just let you watch this one. Um, you just kind of start out here in the middle. the next size and I don't have the wood underneath this but you can see I'm almost there um, there we go it's right there in the middle of that now and what we'll end up doing is let me clean this off okay what we'll end up doing here is putting the punch here on the top like this dropping it straight down through the hole making sure everything's centered up there the way it should be that's why where you drill that pilot hole in the middle is very important you get it off one side or the other and you're going to kind of end up with a you know, wonky chassis there and then what you do is you flip this over and you just kind of start screwing this um, this bottom part in here I don't know if you can see that or not probably not Hold on a second there you go you see I'm just kind of screwing it up here on the bottom like this and once you get it good and snug like that then it's a matter of flipping this back over and it is a matter then of just getting the right size wrench on this and you kind of turn it slowly and eventually you'll hear it do its little pop thing I hear one side or the other side pop Check out the beautiful round hole now we have, and this will mount from the bottom, coming up through, and look at that, um, it's kind of hard to show here, but absolutely beautiful, right in place, love it. Okay, this is a Greenlee uh, 3 quarter inch punch, and you can see these punches I'm using are probably from the 60s or 70s. You can buy brand new ones, I just happened to pick these up used off of eBay over the years. New ones are really expensive. You can get into like $85 to $100 for just one of these little things. If you pick them up used, you can find something like this for probably $25, $30. And I'll tell you, between this one and the one and three sixteenths, I have used those things over and over and over and over. They've been well worth their money over the years. And uh, you see here the three fourths just kind of fit snug right in there. And I always like to check them when I'm using them because I've got about 10 different sizes just make sure I've got the right one and same thing here we've got to get the center bolt hole uh, that'll go down in there so we're gonna have to use the stepper bit a little bit on this and as you can see now all three of the big tubes uh, the two kt 88s the 5 AR4 and we got the little um, driver tube up front here and you can see this type of things it punches out when they when they come out nice little round uh, circles at least they're beautiful okay just a couple things I use a Dremel with a little uh, bit on the back of the top I can burrow to it on the little holes. Um, on the bigger ones so you can use a uh, deburring tool but you just want to knock off the little, uh, little burrs on the back side. And then finally, 
around, as you can see now, I've kind of gone around with the grom, uh, the Dremel. I ended up putting just a little emery wheel on it and just kind of uh, deburring all the way around these. Plus, I wanted to remove a little bit of the paint around each of these. Um, I would like the tube sockets as they bolt down to kind of make contact with the metal. Okay, as I think more about my chassis layout now, what I'm going to want to do, these are the output transformers. I'm going to want to come down right below each of those and put my speaker leads that feed outward. Um, the uh, banana jack style speaker leads. And then I've been thinking about, well, do I then come over here and put my inputs? And the answer is no. I'm going to put the inputs right in the middle. So you'll feed the two inputs in the middle right here. Then you'll have a uh, right speaker, or left speaker in this case, and right speaker here. And then I'm going to reserve this whole half of the amp over here, this side over, for power supply. So we'll be able to put over here on this side, we'll be able to put like our IEC connector right here. And we'll be able to put our fuse holder somewhere right along in here. The good news is we don't have any big components mounting underneath the chassis. So we are going to have a ton of room to work with down underneath this chassis here. Uh, no worries. Well, if you put something underneath the transformer, that's fine because all you've got is a couple wires coming down underneath. All right, here I've just mounted the transformer on here, just kind of set it down in there. Haven't bolted it yet, but I just wanted to make sure that the wires uh, came through and I could get all three of them through there through the grommets, and it worked out perfectly. All right, as you can see here, this is the uh, one I'm kind of modeling after that I found online, and I think it looks really good. Um, two things you notice here, we've got to drill two holes in the front, one here for our volume control, which I'll end up using an Alps pot behind that. And then the other one over here is a hole for the switch. Um, this guy went with a square switch here that uh, when you turned it on, it illuminated green, uh, really bright. And uh, I think that's a pretty cool look, but I don't think it's what I'm going for. I think I'm going to go with just a plain black on off switch that's not lighted. And the reason for that for me um, is I love to sit in a room, uh, listen to music with the lights off. It's uh, just kind of a uh, peaceful, uh, quiescent space. And um, oftentimes I like to watch the uh, uh, blue glow. <laughs> of the tubes, uh, kind of the fluorescence in the tubes. Uh, sometimes it'll dance with the music actually. And a lot of times a bright power switch will kind of uh, mask that and um, kind of obfuscate that from being able to see it. So um, we're going to stick with no no lights on our power switch just for that sole purpose. But you, you can do whatever you want. You may actually get more. Uh, there's some pretty cool little round blue LED um, power switches I've seen out there, different colored uh, little round rings. Um, you can do whatever you want here, it's personal choice. And you can also see what this guy did here with the uh, RCA jacks on the back. And I think I'm going to go with this exact same look. I'm um, probably going to go with the IEC connector over here like he did, but I did notice there's no fuse holder here. He could have just mounted a, a fuse holder underneath, I don't know. But I'm going to go with a round 30 millimeter fuse holder here on the back. So. I'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight holes to drill here, and we'll be done with this uh, back chassis. Eight here and two on the front, nine, ten, and we'll be done with uh, drilling out the chassis. It's a little tough to see here, but what I've done is I've measured across this thing at seven, ten inches. So at eight and a half here in the very middle, I've made a little bitty mark with uh, my graphite or with my uh, pencil. And then what I did is I came over here dead in the middle of my power transformer and I put another little mark here. So I'm going to line up dead in the middle of the power transformers with my on and off switch and I'm going to put my uh, volume switch here in the very middle. That other gentleman had put his over to the left a little bit but I want to stay clear of this front tube socket right here. And so that gives me just more room to wire up this switch. And I think it'll look good to have the volume in the very middle and the power switch right here. Okay, we've got our 100K times 2 Alps pot here. And we're going to take the, the washer off here, or the nut in the washer. we got to figure out, we got to kind of use the stepper bit to get this, <coughs> excuse me, the center one here, the right size for the Alps to fit through. And then similarly, I'm going to use this little rocker switch. I really like these. They're fairly inexpensive. 250 volt at 6 amp rated. Um, you can get about five of them for five or six dollars shipped. And um, that's what we're going to go with. 
Also, if you go with the Alps Pots, they've got this little uh, a little tip that sticks out here that's designed for you to drill another hole in your chassis so that when this comes through, there's no way for it to turn. I've found you can just knock these off and tighten things up here and you don't have any issues with them turning uh, most of the time. So I just kind of use a Dremel here uh, with a cutting bit and uh, we'll take that take that off. And uh, I've never had an issue with uh, not having that on there. I get it. It may be better, but uh, it also causes an ugly hole in the front of your amp with a little silver thing sticking through. Alright, we just used the stepper bit here and drilled this out. We've got it to the right size, but it, notice it doesn't fit all the way down. It fits into the hole. What you got is this little notch on one side here that's designed to keep this from turning one way or another. And so I'd use a Dremel uh, with just a little tip on it like this to kind of notch out one side here so that this will slide down in there easily. And here you can see we just used a Dremel and cut off about a quarter inch of this shaft. It's a little too long for any of the knobs I was wanting to use. Um, we'll vacuum that up. Alright, this is one of those different strokes for different folks kind of things. But I like using old military knobs that I find off of old vintage uh, equipment. And um, I really like this one here. It's got a little uh, indicator on it as I turn it here for the for the volume as smooth as can be and you can see the power switch I put in over here like I said uh, different strokes different folks you can do what you want here uh, that guy used a big round black solid knob which I thought looked really good too I just like bringing a little bit of vintage to whatever I'm working on here and uh, so do what you want might be a little tough to see here but I've got a center line that I had kind of marked off I've got a um, one RCA, another RCA, and I've got that centered in the middle of this transformer right here. I've got another, I don't call them RCAs, they're banana jacks, um, centered in the middle of this transformer, another. These are an inch and a half apart, an inch and a half apart. And then similarly here, in the very middle between these two, I uh, kind of marked a spot and I went an inch and a half up and down right here. So uh, kind of perpendicular that way and this way, they're in a good place. All right, simple enough. Got them drilled out now. Just got to figure out. I'm going to get my RCA jacks out, my banana jacks out, and actually find the right size I need to make this work out. Okay, as you can see here, I'm going to use some of these high-end uh, silver-plated CMC units. Uh, they're a little bit pricey. A set of all these, uh, for an ample, cost you about 25 to 30 bucks. Uh, but you could get by. I mean, you just use plain old. Uh, you know, any of these old type little red and white ones, um, you know, just standard banana jack you get out of uh, off eBay. Um, any of them will work for what you're doing here. Okay, more so than with anything else, your RCA jacks here, um, you're going to have some little plastic washers and they've got a little lip on the edge of them right there on both sides. Um, and you're going to want to use those and you're going to want to isolate these from the chassis. Um, because you we, we'll talk about it more but you don't want to ground these at the chassis and then somewhere else so we're gonna float these these RCA inputs at the edge here and you can only do that by using these plastic spacers that come with it okay you'll kind of know when you hit it when you can take your little rubber or plastic grommet here and drop it down in and it won't jump out of the track um, that's when you know you got it where you need it Okay, and then similarly, we got a little recess here on these that'll fit down in there, um, and you basically have to do the same thing for the uh, for the banana jacks. And it's it's actually the exact same hole that these uh, use if you use this brand. And I will put the model number for these in the bottom of my uh, spreadsheet as an optional component. All right, I think that looks just damn sexy. Um, I'll mount it on there. Okay, by the way, when you when you're tightening these. Banana jacks up. Make sure you loosen these before you tighten these down. Otherwise, you get them in a bind. And then once you've got them in, you can tighten these back down. Um, but good and solid. I love this uh, kind of silver plated stuff. It don't want to last for many years. All right, there again. I'm gonna go with something vintage here. I love. I steal these off of old equipment or whatnot. But it's a uh, just an old fuse holder. I'm gonna clean it up, and I really like the the look and feel of these old uh, push and turn style. Uh, fuse holders. So we just got to drill it out large enough here to, uh, to fit in right there and I mark my spot. And then I'm going to have to cut the IEC connector out over here and I've got a rectangular shaped 
um, chassis punch that I use for ICs. It's not perfect. It gets close here on this and then I have to use a nibble gun to kind of nibble out just a little bit more. Okay, as you can see I drilled this one out and the uh, fuse holder here drops right down in there perfectly. And then on this one I used the square um, chassis punch, punched it out, but then I need to widen it just a hair and all it takes is a little air nibbler, like I mean a hand nibbler, and I just did a little nibble all along this edge over here. And then this drops perfectly down into that spot. And now I just got to drill two little holes, one on each side here um, for the mounting screws. Alright, we've got the front mounted up now. Love this knob. Might not be for everyone, but I love it. Got the back. Um, all done at this point. Fuse holder, IC connector, um, RCA in the middle here, mounted jacks on either side. Now we got left is to actually mount the transformers and the tube sockets. Let's do that. There again, I'm just going to mount all the tube sockets first because it, it's lighter and easier to handle. And then I'll put the transformers on because once you do that, this thing turns into a beast. The 440 by 3 8 inch uh, little black um, hex heads and then 440k locks uh, with um, built-in washers, uh, lock washers on those is what we're going to use to hold all the tube sockets in place. Alright, we've got the tube sockets mounted. I put the key holes all in the same direction so that number one pins are all going this way. Use a little black uh, hardware here and I know a lot of guys will use the silver little hardware that comes with the tube sockets. I'm just not a fan. I, I kind of like the black belt look here, so it's all personal preference. Okay, and I'm out the transformers. These are 10, 24 by half, and I've got number 10, 24 uh, lock wash, K lock washers here again for those. Uh, we're going to get them mounted. All right, on your output transformer, you're going to want to orient the uh, white and yellow, which are the speaker leads, out the back. Um, and then you're going to want to feed the others down through the rubber grommets. And yes, these three will fit into that little hole and uh, kind of feed down in there. I just kind of feed them like this and you take your time and uh, probably lay it down and turn it on its side, which I can't do here, but you get the idea. You'll feed them through and then you'll bolt this down. Okay, a little bit of trial and error. What I've learned here is that I've got actually uh, five wires going out of this one and four wires out of this one will not fit into these little grommets. So remember earlier I said you can always go bigger. I'm going to pop these two out, drill these holes just a little bit bigger and pop two bigger grommets in. All right, we're getting things mounted up here, but you've heard the old adage measure twice, cut once. Well, I will say this, making a video adds a layer of complexity to anything you're doing. You're always stopping, looking for camera angles, um, kind of pausing to make sure things look right and sound right and all that. And in the midst of doing all that, um, my human side has came out and I have made an error. A uh, pretty significant one at that. And um, so let me show you what I've got going on here. See if you can, see if you can notice it here as I get this turned around. Um, yeah, you're right. <laughs> These two are supposed to be right here. And these are supposed to be over here. For whatever reason, when I was doing the back side here, I was thinking this and this were the two output transformers and this was the power transformer holes. And I kind of marked based off of that coming down, um, but I messed it up. Should have came down here, should have came down here, should have put my power over here. So I have just wasted a $34 chassis because I could wire it up like this and it might work fine, but I'm a big fan of keeping the power away from your input and um, power here away from your output. So this chassis would not achieve that at that point, this point in time. So we're going to go find a new chassis, order it. Should be here uh, later this week and we'll get back to, uh, I'll just quickly drill the chassis again. So when you see this video again next weekend, we'll pick up right here where we left off. But um, hey, I'm human and I make mistakes and uh, the video adds some complexity here that kind of got me off track. I was spending more time focused on the video than I was the amp, which is probably not what I should have been doing. Okay, here we are on Antique Electronics Supplies website. And if you go back, go back to my uh, parts listing here, you'll find this Hammond uh, part number. It's the 1441-32BK3 chassis. And I originally had down here, it was $43 and I had bought mine from Parts Connection. But I'm actually finding that Antique Electronics Supply here 
has them less expensive. It's the same 17103 chassis. And they have them for $33. Um, and we'll have to see how much shipping is. But about it'll be about 40 bucks with shipping here. So um, I'm going to get that ordered. Hopefully it'll be here by the weekend. And we can pick up part uh, four, I think it'll be, in this video series. Get this thing over on the bench and start wiring it up. So um, thanks for watching this one, everybody. Sorry I made a mistake. We uh, we all do. And uh, it's not the first chassis I, I burn up in my life. It's... Uh, Probably one of many, and uh, if I slow down a little bit, I might not do that. But you know, we're having fun. That's all that really matters. And uh, if all it costs me is thirty or forty bucks to make a mistake. It's not the end of the world. At least I wasn't completely wired up on the app. I'm, I'm in a good place. I can uh, take me about an hour or two to catch back up to where I'm at. Uh, so, thanks for watching, everybody, and uh, stay tuned. We're having a lot of fun with this series. I hope you are too, and uh, hope you're learning something.